History is filled with stars who show immense talent, but then tragically have their lives cut short before they can fulfill the early promise. Living on in our minds as we ponder what if. Today we explore the life and indeed shocking death of one such star, actress and Playboy centerfold Dorothy Stratton. Dorothy Ruth Hook Stratton, known professionally as Dorothy Stratton, was born on February 28, 1960 in Vancouver, British Columbia. Her parents emigrated to Canada from the Netherlands, but would eventually split up and by 1977, Stratton was attending Centennial High School while also working part-time at her local Dairy Queen restaurant to help support her mother and siblings. It was while working a shift here that the then 17-year-old met a 26-year-old club promoter and pimp, Paul Snyder. This meeting would quickly prove to be a fateful one. He was a would-be tough guy that had the build, but not the nerve. Seen as just a punk by the gangsters he looked up to and on one occasion being hung upside down from the 30th floor of a building by loan sharks when he failed to cash up. The look was enough to catch Dorothy's eye, however, and Snyder groomed the young Hook Stratton, convincing her to take part in a nude photo shoot at 18, for which she had to convince her mother to sign the release form. Snyder then sent the photos to Playboy magazine, and later in 1978, she was chosen as the finalist in the 25th anniversary Great Playmate Hunt. Things began to move fast for Dorothy, and in August of that year, she left Vancouver for the bright lights of Los Angeles. Snyder would join her in October, and despite warnings about him from her friends, a few months later the pair were married. Her bonds with the shady Snyder weren't the only ones being strengthened, as her ties with the Playboy empire also grew. She arrived at the Playboy mansion as part of the Playmate hunt, where she was said to be very shy, naive and uncomfortable with the casual nudity around the place. Several of the playmates took her under their wing and protected her from several of Hugh Hefner's friends they considered to be predators. She would have several photo shoots for Playboy, however, and worked for a time as a bunny girl at a Playboy club in downtown LA. By this time, she had also had a few small roles in TV shows like Buck Rogers and Fantasy Island, along with a handful of film appearances. Stratton had met Playboy creator Hugh Hefner several times since being chosen and along with encouraging her acting career, he also made it clear he was not a fan of Snyder, who he saw as nothing more than a hustler. 1980 saw Stratton have her first and only starring role in a movie, the low-budget sci-fi flick Galaxina. During the shoot, Snyder acted as Stratton's de facto chauffeur, acting coach and manager, controlling every facet of Dorothy's life. Things were often heated between the two, and this didn't go unnoticed by her Galaxina co-stars. In March, she flew out to New York to work on the comedy film They All Laughed, where she would feature alongside Audrey Hepburn and John Ritter, amongst others. The director of this film was Peter Bogdanovich, who would go on to direct films such as Paper Moon and Mask. Knowing that this was a big opportunity for her and not wanting Snyder to mess things up, she told him that the director had insisted on having a closed set, where only the actors and crew would be allowed. This wasn't just to stop Snyder from making a mess of her career, however, as she had secretly began an affair with Bogdanovich. Stratton returned to California in April, where she was announced as being Playboy's Playmate of the Year for 1980. Hugh Hefner, in a speech stating that Dorothy is rather something special, really quite unique. She was then set for a two-week promotional tour of Canada, but with no dates planned on the first weekend, she flew out to New York to surprise Bogdanovich. When she returned to begin the Canada tour, she wrote a letter to Snyder, who was still in Los Angeles. In the letter, she asked for more freedom in their relationship. Upon receiving the letter, Snyder phoned Stratton and flew into a rage when she answered. He then flew out to meet her on the final dates of her tour. The tour was ending in Vancouver so Stratton could rest and see her family, but Snyder coerced her into making several appearances at clubs he had worked for in the past, pocketing all the appearance fees 
for himself. This period proved to be the final straw for Stratton. She flew back out to New York to complete filming for They All Laughed and Snyder returned to LA. Snyder found it harder to get hold of Dorothy until a few weeks after their first anniversary, when he received another letter. This one stating that from this point, they were now physically and financially separated. Once again, enraged Snyder emptied the joint bank account, had an affair of his own, and suspecting Stratton's relationship with Bogdanovich, hired a private detective to find evidence of her infidelity. Being a foreign national in the US without a green card, Snyder was unable and perhaps unwilling to find a job. And once he had burned through the cash in their account, he began selling Stratton's Playmate of the Year prizes at markdown prices so as to make some quick cash. Filming, for they all laughed, finished in July and production wrapped and after spending 10 days on holiday in the UK together, Stratton and Bogdanovich returned to his Bel Air home. By this time, Snyder was on edge, furious that he no longer had control over Stratton. Knowing she had returned from filming and was now residing at Bogdanovich's home, on July 31st, Snyder borrowed a handgun and laid in wait in the shadows outside. He planned to shoot anyone who appeared at the front door. And when nobody did, he eventually got bored and drove up into the hills where a friend states that he considered committing suicide. Stratton would meet with Snyder a week later in a meeting where Snyder thought he could win her back, but one she knew was to draw a line in the sand. She told him that she'd fallen in love with Bogdanovich and wanted to finalize their separation. Snyder agreed to meet a week later to discuss the monetary settlement. Over the following weeks, Snyder became obsessed with getting a gun. He had returned the one he borrowed earlier, and as a Canadian citizen, gun stores in the US couldn't sell one to him. He even tried to convince the private detective he had hired to purchase one for him, saying he needed a machine gun for home protection, but he refused and tried to talk him out of the idea. On August 13th, however, he found a gun for sale in a local classified ad. The seller didn't ask too many questions, and by that night, Snyder had his hands on a 12-gauge shotgun. When talking to friends about it, he cryptically said he was going to take up hunting. Noon the next day and Stratton was coming to the end of a meeting with her business manager discussing the settlement. The manager said to her that she could avoid spending any more time with Snyder if she allowed her lawyer to deal with him. But she said that things would go easier if she dealt with him, stating, I'd like to remain his friend. Later, she arrived at the home she and Snyder once shared and entered for the final time. Later that night, the bodies of both Stratton and Snyder were discovered by Snyder's housemates. Both were nude and both killed by single gunshot wounds. Police believed Snyder had raped and murdered her before abusing her further, with him eventually turning the gun on himself. Just past midnight, Hugh Hefner was alerted to what had happened by the detective that Snyder had hired. Hefner then informed Bogdanovich, who collapsed to the floor before being sedated. Stratton's family were informed later that day. Stratton's murder shocked America, with several films being made about her life and murder, along with songs such as Californication by Red Hot Chili Peppers and The Best Was Yet to Come by Brian Adams being inspired by or dedicated to Stratton. Not all was sympathetic to what had happened, however, as author Teresa Carpenter wrote a Pulitzer Prize winning article about the incident. In it, she paints a picture of Snyder being used as a stepping stone by Stratton, and then when bigger things came along, she no longer had a need for him. The article also paints Hugh Hefner and his empire as potential causes for what transpired. It was no secret he wanted Snyder out of the picture, and she states that his playboy empire promotes the image of women being objects, with Paul's fault being that he subscribed to that mindset. As for the film that Stratton and Bogdanovich had been working on before her death, they all laughed, had a limited release and received little publicity push from the studio. Determined that Stratton's last movie should not sink into obscurity, Bogdanovich bought the theatrical rights to the film and had it re-released in cinemas, plunging $5 million into the project. And despite it receiving favorable reviews, it didn't make that money back. This would eventually lead to him declaring bankruptcy in 1985 and selling the mansion he had shared with Stratton 
in her final few days. He would also release a statement which read, Dorothy Stratton was as gifted and intelligent an actress as she was beautiful. And she was very beautiful indeed, in every way imaginable, most particularly in her heart. She and I fell in love during our picture and had planned to be married as soon as her divorce was final. The loss to her mother and father, her sister and brother, to my children, to her friends and to me is larger than we can calculate. But there is no life Dorothy's touched that has not been changed for the better. Through knowing her, however briefly, Dorothy looked at the world with love and believed that all people were good down deep. She was mistaken, but it is among the most generous and noble errors we can make. Bogdanovich took Stratton's family under his wing and perhaps slightly tarnishing his attempt to cement his lost love's memory is the fact that Bogdanovich would go on to have a relationship and marry Dorothy's younger sister, Louise, in 1988. He was 49 and she was 20, though the couple remained together until 2001. Stratton was cremated and remains interred at Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery, a short distance from Playboy's first tragic centerfold, Marilyn Monroe. A tragic tale of life and career cut short Thank you for watching, and if you could hit that subscribe button, that would be awesome. A big thank you to those that already have. We have plenty more to come, so until next time, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.